They're all heroes. Oh, absolutely. Okay, hey everybody, I think we're live now. Um, welcome to our Sundance Get Hooked Fishing Seminar. I'm Tony, and uh, we got I'm Sam here. I'm the one who's gotten hooked so far. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's because you, you got to learn how to cast. Uh, uh, before we start, we're going to talk about offshore fishing and what's biting, you know, off uh, Stewart here in, in, um, in uh, St. Lucie County. And um, before I start, I want to just say a couple of quick things. Uh, we've got some events coming up, Sundance does. We have a, uh, a Sundance um a, a rendezvous that's in the July, and it's uh, it's it's an old Bahama Bay, July twenty first to the twenty fourth, and so you know that'll be available. You can go to a link, and um, we'll be sending out emails if you're in our email list uh, with signups. You can go to our uh, our web page as well. Also, Everglades Boats is having a, a, a like a mini two day one in June that they go to Bimini with. Um, that's June 6th to the 8th. So all you Everglades boat owners that uh, maybe have not gotten that notice, uh, if you want some more information, reach out to me or someone here at the store at Sundance, and we can, we can get you some more details on that. Also, um, our South store is going to have a Bimini rendezvous, and that's also in July. I believe it's towards the end of July. But all that information is going to be on our website, so check it out. And um, we just got back. I want to say one thing to our one of our lo loyal watchers is Jerry, mm -hmm. and uh, he called and wanted to give his regards. He couldn't yeah. make it. He's uh, recovering. He was he was uh, having some chemo, and he's doing better. And uh, he's got we, throat cancer, had not he? We wish him well, and um, he said to say hello, and you know he'll he's a great try guy, to get man. here at our next meeting. Say, so, hey, Jerry, thanks for watching, and um, we're gonna you know start off with uh, Mr. Sam. Yeah. He, I'm going to say something about Jerry. You know, he was a, he started off as a physical therapist, but that guy has more medical knowledge than, you know, I got at him and his son. His son's an airborne ranger and a captain. The other one's a captain and, and uh, uh, a pilot. And they're just such a nice family. And he's, he is a very good guy, very smart guy. Yeah. Very smart guy. Well, we hope to see him next month. Uh, yeah. Sure but the wind ever quits blowing, we can go offshore. <laughs> we try. Ah, for <laughs> You all know we have we've usually have some video content that we put up here, and um, it's been tough lately. We haven't been able to get out because of the wind, because uh, of, you know, events going on, boat shows. We just got back from... You've been so busy, we hadn't got to go, well, man. You know, we got dealer stuff going on, so, you know, we're, we're going to go. We're yeah, gonna, Miami. We, have, you know, we don't always have boats available, but now that's changing, too. So, you know, if you're looking for a boat, whether it be used or new, come and see us. We, we're, everything's starting to get better, so, and we'll get some video. We're, we're going to get out. So what's biting right now? You were out. Well, selfish, uh, selfish, if you can get out there, the selfish are good. Selfish bites good? Yeah, selfish bites good. Uh, you know, if you can get out there, if you, if you've got a, uh, anything less than a 36, it's been too rough, man. You just can't get out I know out a friend there. of mine's been going out in his, uh, his 28 and, um, it's been snotty, but he's been getting some black tuna out off the, the push button hill. And, sure. And, sure. uh, they've been getting some mahi in hundred to 200 feet. Right. Right. So they're I, out there. You I talked to Scott to Foster. He was in 301. Yeah, oh yeah, three hundred feet, and uh, he said that uh, the mahi bite was pretty good out there. Yeah, uh, so they're definitely catching them. You got to get your time in. You got to be able to get but, out on some of those days. Not everybody has a thirty-six foot boat. Exactly, and you know, a lot of people. You know, I'm, I'm amazed at people that they want to go offshore. Okay, and it's rough. I mean, it's rough. Like today, it was five to seven, and uh, of course, we didn't go out there. But uh, you know, if you've got a problem with motion sickness, there's a product out there called Bonnie, B-O-N-N-I-E, B -O -N -N -I -E. and it doesn't make you drowsy. If you'll take one at night before you go to bed, and then take one when you get up in the morning, it's it'll before you really, go out on the boat. Before you go out on the boat. 
don't start throwing up and then take it because it don't do no good. <laughs> you just chum it. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, take some precautions so that you don't get sick and you can enjoy your day. I, I just, because it's going to be from now until June. It's going to be tough. It's going to yeah, be rough. The, the, you know, there's another product called Seakeeper. Seakeeper? They're making them smaller for smaller boats now. And they they yeah. work well. Yeah, but they cost, what, four or five thousand dollars? They cost a lot more than Boney. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, uh, I've, I've run a couple of boats with that Seakeeper on it. It's amazing how much more stable that boat is with we, that Seakeeper. We ran that 435 Everglades. Yeah, that's right. That we was rough right. that yeah. day. We yeah. were out there and we got some fish. It's got that gyro in it, and that gyro spins and spins, and it helps to stabilize that boat. And it's amazing how how much how more much more stable it is with that thing in there. But you know, getting back to, uh, I know if it's rough, and a little trick that uh, I've learned: if it's rough and it's blowing out of the south like it did today. You know, you can you can go out to Stewart Inlet and head north, and that puts the wind behind you. That puts a, a tail, what we call a tailing sea. It puts the wind behind you, so then you can troll, you know, over the wrecks between here and Fort Pierce, and then come in Fort Pierce and come back north, uh, south on the ICW, and it makes it a lot better. Make so it just a do a big better. loop? Big pardon? Just big loop. big loop. Yeah, make a big loop. And uh, it makes it, when you get that tailing C, it makes it a, a lot easier to troll. And you don't have to troll. I don't like, I like to troll. If I'm trolling artificials, and I brought some of my favorite colors with me tonight, uh, uh, Tony gets on to me when I don't bring lures. But, uh, you know, it uh, looked like they've been in your box for a little while. Well, that one's a little yellow, but it was on top. <laughs> but uh, are yours not yellow? The ones you brought? Uh, I didn't bring them. <laughs> I rushed but, out of the house. I was so excited to get to work today. I yeah, I know you were. You look like it when you come crawling in here in the morning. But uh, you know, it it's uh, that tailing sea will really, really help you. Uh, as far as the rough of the boat being so unstable. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's not much fun when, it, when you have to lay down on the bottom of the boat to fish. <laughs> a lot of guys are doing live bait on the, on the sailfish, right? Oh, yeah. That's live bait. And, uh, you know, I use a dredge. And uh, I would have brought my dredge, but I didn't want to have to wrestle it in here. But. Uh, a dredge is an uh, artificial school. It, it's an artificial piece of equipment that simulates a huge school of bait fish. And uh, it'll, what happens if, if you've got a flat line out and they come up behind that dredge, you can take and put that flat line out to him and he'll come up behind it. And, you know, he'll be swimming like that, coming up behind it. And then you can put that uh, live bait back to him, and there's a 80% chance he's going to hit it. You know, and the cobia, too. The cobia will come up behind him. So and, the cobia bite, this this is the time of year we see, start to see yes, them as sir. well, right? And the, bull, and the bull sharks aren't that bad yet. So if you want to catch a cobia to eat, right now is the time to get out there, if you can get out there. How's the live bait? Any reports? Live bait, I, there was millions on bull shark barge a week ago last Monday, a week ago yesterday. Millions of them. But you can't get out there and fish for them now because it's too rough. I mean, it's just too doggone rough. Of course, you know, there's nothing, in my opinion, beats a live bait. I mean, it's just... What kind? Yeah. Uh, Sir, what kind? Uh, you know, I like the greenies. My favorite of all is a scale sardine. A scale sardine just does it for me. And you know, it uh, 
and flatline them. Um, I wish I could draw you a diagram, but I run I run a twenty four foot boat and I run four lines, and uh, that's as good as it gets. I put my two outside lines out, and then I put one by two uh, lines out the back when I'm drifting, and I got a, a two ounce egg sinker on one and a three ounce egg sinker on the other one. The three ounce egg sinker, the two ounce egg sinker. And I kind of split that depth up a little bit, and it'll and on the uh, on the two weighted live baits on the two weighted ones, I uh, keep them pretty close to the boat, not not real not real far behind the boat. Now the two uh, flat lines, I get them pretty pretty good ways out behind the boat, but uh, it just makes all the difference in the world. With a with a spread like that. So you do the uh, live baits. Where do you drop them back to second wave or the back? You know, uh, uh, when I'm more or less when I'm bump trolling the live baits, I've got got them the, the outside lines. I've got them back about as far as I can see them. You can't get them too far back. No. You can get them too close. But you can't get them too far back. You know, and. Uh, you know, I asked you this this morning about permits. You said, no, we're going to talk about the fish permit. <laughs> but may, may, make sure. A miscommunication there. On the yeah. Language. Make sure that if you're going to keep those pelagic species, make sure you have a pelagic species permit. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep a sailfish, some people say, oh, man, that's almost sacrilegious to talk about keeping him selfish. But if you kill him, land him, you know, you either feed him to the fish or feed him to you, <laughs> whichever one you want to do. Selfish, uh, uh, tuna, um, what are some of the others that are pelagic species? Well, any billfish. Any right? billfish. Not, and not blackfin tuna. Not no. blackfin. You right. don't have to have one for blackfin. Yellowfin. Now, skipjack, you have to have a permit. Yep. You have to have a permit for those. So, and yeah, it, those are the tuna that we'd see out here. You might see a yellow fin. 65, maybe? Sir? Yes. Your fishing license is free over no. 65. Not that. This is extra. Now, that's something else you brought up right there. The, fi the, the, the license for somebody who's of retirement age 65 and older, that you don't have to have a state license. You still have to be federally permitted for if you're fishing in federal waters for these fish. That's, I read my migratory it's, it's more to the boat than to the individual. If you're over 65 and keep a snook, you got to have a snook stamp. Yeah. Okay. You sure do. Same with lobster. Sir? Kings and Wahoo. Kings and Wahoo? No. But, and you don't have to have a permit for those. What's the uh, federal line? How far out? Three miles out. Federal waters, three miles offshore. So you get to the sand pile, anything past that? Any federal No, no. Three miles out, federal waters. So you mentioned permit. This time of year, permits start to show up on some of the artificial wrecks out there. Yeah, this time of year, some on some of the artificial wrecks. But <clears throat> I'm probably going to get in trouble here. But one thing I... I don't have much luck with permit unless it's on crabs. Crabs are big shrimp. I'm talking about big shrimp. If you don't have big shrimp or crabs, a crab about like that, you're not going to catch me. So why would you get in trouble? Well, you know, these, these people paid me a lot of money to talk about their lures. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talk about live bait. The crabs are live bait, and, and, you know. Well, I put live bait on all these lures. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark but, makes a crab. Yeah, he makes a crab. Uh, you know, if you can cite them, you know, maybe you can. But let me say this. Let me finish up. Right now, you're not going to buy a lot of crabs unless you go to the Keys. So... If you can get out here on some of these shallow banks and you and catch your live crabs, you're going to be way ahead of the game, way ahead of the game. Like these beaches around here, like at Jensen Beach, 
Stewart Be uh, Jetson Beach Causeway, Stewart Beach Causeway, Stewart Causeway, some of those places. The sandbar. I haven't seen a lot of crabs out there yet, but there's some cra when you if you can catch those crabs and you got to keep them alive. They don't like them dead. You got to keep them alive. I, I take the pictures off of them, take them home, and then keep them in a cool place. You got to keep them in a real cool place. And you got to feed them a little bit. You know, you put some, put a piece, couple of pieces of fish in there, and and feed them a little bit. And keep stay. them in a fish trap. Yeah, stay on. Nah, I keep them in a in a tub. You know, tub rectangular tub. Is it aerated? Nope. No. No. They don't have to aerate. You don't have to aerate, but you got to keep something in there for them. You got to keep it cold, though. Yeah, you got to keep it cold. You got to keep something in there for them to eat, or they'll eat your, each other. Put them in the refrigerator. Sir. Put them in the refrigerator. Put them in the refrigerator. Like a lobster. You put you put yours in the refrigerator. They stay yeah. alive. Freeze them, right? I've like done that with shrimp, where you you know that you can keep them in a cooler with wet newspaper, and they'll stay alive. It's interesting. Yeah, ice on the bottom, and then layer the newspaper, and it'll it slows the metabolism down, and they stay alive. Yeah, I've never done that. I'm kind of henpecked. I don't know. You know, when I, Anything that's not frozen in that refrigerator. Has anybody been fishing at all recently? I'm talking. Hey, hey, I got you on video. <laughs> that's, you. that's called assault. Well, I'm gonna get my money's worth then. <laughs> Keith, no, <laughs> he's an ex policeman. No, uh, anything that's in my refrigerator that's not frozen and smells fishy, my wife feeds it to my cat. So. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Poor cat. Go ahead, sir. I have to come rescue your cat. No, I was just wondering if anybody was out fishing at all. Anybody getting anything from that we have, you know, 12 people here or 10 or 12 people here? Salty days. Rich got a big cobia today and released a hundred spot. Big cobia? So Where what? Uh, outside? So we're seeing cobia I showing up? I saw him at the boat ramp uh, about one thirty, I want to say. Salty day. Yeah, Rich. Uh, he's got a big uh, Boston whaler, and in green letters it says Salty Days, D A Z Y. Oh, I've seen that boat. Yeah, Rich, Rich, Rich Tudor, I think is his name. Cap oh, okay. Captain. He's a captain. Captain Tudor. Yeah, yeah, he got a big, big Colby. He was going in at the Sandsbury today about one thirty. Mm -hmm. He said it was they're rough. They're, they're showing up. You just right. got to get out there. A little bit rough, but you know, Colby will like it. They don't like it. Slick. They like it a little bit choppy. But uh, anybody been snook fishing? How you been doing? Four slots? No. No, under slot. A lot of under slot fish this year. Take care of them under slot fish, man. Put them back. Big sales. Yeah. Big Yeah. Take care of them under, under slot fish because gonna, we're going to be catching them next year. Yeah. I told, did I tell y'all I caught a pretty good trout today? Caught a pretty good trout in the Indian. Uh, yeah, it was a, I hope that guy's not watching. It was a, it was a, over 15, but I told him the season was closed. <laughs> Has to be over 15 under 19. Yeah. Yeah. And we're still catching a few croakers around Sailor's Return, around that dock there. And croakers, I don't feel bad about eating them because there's plenty of them. Good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Are there are there any big snook coming in the inlet yet? No, I hadn't seen any coming in the inlet. Hadn't seen any of them vultures anchored up out there, them guides. <laughs> it's got to get warm. Well, it's good. The water's not warm enough the yet. The dredge line out there. Sir? The dredging. Yeah. They're yeah. shooting the they, they are in it. Our in it is kibosh this year. I can't believe they do that every spring. They're supposed to be done though here pretty soon. I think they have a deadline. They've got to move by the end of the month. I don't know. Huh? I, I think I think that's right. I think it's the yeah. end of the month. Yeah, they'll they be out of there. The Guys, we have the video up from the inlet camera, and uh, that's that we've been watching them every day. 
And you can see all this. This was twice the size. It's like the size of a football field. I don't understand what they're, they're doing with that. They're, they they push it out, and then they, they you know where they're it putting away. it. They Jupiter pumps beach. down the beach. Jupiter Island Beach. Pumps down State Park. Hope, Hope Sound. Sound. Hope. I mean, Hope Sound. State Park. Beach. Well, they're, they're doing it in Jensen too. They're pumping it to Bathtub Beach. No, they're uh, doing it. Uh, we live in Islandia, which is kind of across the street from Nettles. Yep. So they've actually started north of us, which which would be north of the Pumper Beach. They're Unless dumping it, or they're pumping it in. They're pumping it in mm -hmm. on the beach. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're increasing the depth of the beach, plus. Raising the dune a little bit. Interesting. So, so I mean, the dredge is right off the right oh yeah, off the beach. Going, going out What's it smell like? Watching. Oh, you can't smell it. You can't smell it. No. That's good. Um, but I, we're watching them because we live on the top floor and you can see them. They go out about three to five miles, soak up all this sand on this ship, and by the time the ship gets back, water is coming up over the ship. I mean, it's that. Right. Sunken into the water. Mm -hmm. From the and sand. And they, they hook up to a, uh, a flexible pipe mm -hmm. that hooks into the pipe that's laying down in the ocean yeah. floor. It Pump it up on the beach. beach. Pumps it right up. So we can see them. They have hosers out there moving it. <coughs> I mean, they're really increasing the depth of the beach. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's well, it'll, it'll be there until the next storm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah so. exactly. I mean, they're probably increasing it three times what it is. Yeah. Wow. But we'll see how long it lasts. Yeah. In 08, when we had that big hurricane, you remember that? Was it 08 or 05? 05, 05 was, was, was... The hurricanes that hit you was 05. 05 was Wilma. Uh, Wilma. Five and six. Those, those houses on Hutchison Island had five or six foot of sand in them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was... The it devastated that. Really Gene and first floor was sand. Francis yeah. and Gene hit. When it blew away the whole day in. Yeah. Yeah. So what what else, Sam? What are we got what, what are we looking for you know forward to this this fall? You know, you, I guess the mutton snapper starts to get good too, right? Yeah, it, the mutton snapper will be good. So we're gonna yeah. try to get out there and get some get some muttons, right? On, I hope before so. our next before but our next if month. you ever slow down where we can go. How, how deep do you fish the muttons this time of year? I like 40 feet. Really? Inside the reefs, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And and on the reef, I like the reef, too. On the bottom? Yeah, the muttons. Muttons are my least favorite fish to catch. Really? Because you got to use a lot of weight, and you got to use a tremendously long leader, and you wind up handlining them most of the time. Pulling them faster than the sharks go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully that we won't have to deal with the sharks. But I noticed that uh, off the chain, Scott Fawcett posted a big white shark on his on his website the other day. It you was, get a video? Up, he was up. He was uh, at three hundred feet. And it was big. I mean, big. It was over twelve foot. Yeah, he's big enough. Where? <laughs> well, he's a <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably take more than a mouthful if he bitch. <laughs> well, there was a, there was a kid that wasn't there a kid diving that that video. Uh, was it Palm yeah. Beach? I think so. Who was they were swimming with it? Mm -hmm. it? Wasn't a twelve footer, but it was a it was a great white. Whatever. There's I mean, been a few spottings here lately, yeah, right, right, right up right up the coast. Yeah, they're very I've seen the people there. look down the barrel of the shotgun and see if it's loaded, too, but I ain't going to do it. <laughs> well, you don't like to swim with the fish. Fish, they have, they like to have a lot of revenge on me. <laughs> All my life. So you're going to come back in your next life as a mullet. <laughs> Getting chased and eaten by everything. I that's hope swim, I right? don't. <laughs> he wouldn't what, make it very long. What I would like to come back is an octopus. You ever thought about that? You got eight arms and legs. To change your colors. You can change colors. Yeah. And you can crawl in a hole that's that big. <laughs> 
taste good. Nah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna come back with no octopus. <laughs> be good with sauce. I'm gonna come back with <laughs> wings. Angel. Okay. <laughs> so what, what's your uh, what's your tackle for for this? What are we doing? You know, we you're using um, open, you know, like Shimano TLD style reels or. Well, I use both. I use the <clears throat> Shimano, uh, big Shimano uh, spinning reels with a bait runner on them. For, on, with a live bait. On my outside rig, uh, on my outside riggers. And then I use conventional reels. I use, I tell you, I found a new reel. I didn't find it. I earned it. Uh, it's called a 16, uh, Shimano 16, uh, level one, uh, a, um, lever drag reel. And that's, that's, I really like it. I've been using Accurates forever, but that level one, um, that, uh, uh, lever drag reel, that 16, they make a 16, a 20, and a 24. Shimano? Yeah. And, uh, but that 16 is just perfect for what we fish for. You know, if you were going to fish for marlin or something, uh, you know, the 24 would be probably a better choice, but uh, you don't have to have it. Yes, sir. Oh, I thought you were going to ask the question. I was hoping you was going to ask the question. But, uh, you know, I, I, like the, I like the level. The thing about, the only thing about the lever drag reels is you, uh, a lot of people won't, they'll pile the line up in the middle and then they'll two block their sail. You know what I'm saying? Then they can't line it. Something wrong with the reel. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> All the line. But you got to remember to. And I'm not afraid to use a bait cat. I mean, a, 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 a level one reel out there. I like level one reels for inshore, near shore, not for offshore. Right. Why? Why do I like it? No, why don't you for offshore? Well, because you've got such a big line capacity, they'll, uh, if, if, if that fish makes a huge run, and we'll say your reel's that wide, he makes a huge run, and that line starts coming off on this side right here, it increases your drag so much, he'll, there's a good chance he'll break you off. Huh. Yeah. If the speed of the level wind is different from the speed that the, the line's coming off, got it. It, it, it goes, you know, the, the, the level over here and the line's coming off the spool on the opposite yeah, end. There. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah. But, you know, you gotta, but I stay pretty close to them. If I got a customer that's got a fish on like that, I'm gonna stay pretty close to them. I'm gonna stay right on top of you. Because they're not used to it. Yeah. You know, and and I don't. If you get a fish for a lifetime, it makes me sick for seeing and lose it. I had a guy lost a huge cobia last week on the sand pile, and he was like that. I said, "Dude, you got to reel that thing. That ain't no walleye. You got to crank the handle on that baby." You know <laughs> what? What'd you say? I love the walleye fish. You got a walleye fisher. You got to watch what you say, man. Anyway, hey, I love walleye fishing, but you don't fight them like you do no sixty pound cobia. Well, I went to uh, yes, sir. Just to get back to sailfish. Yes, sir. I'm from down south, Deerfield Beach. Deerfield Beach. Uh huh. Start at sixty, go out to about two fifty. It didn't have any sign like a clean break between the green and blue water. Yeah. Uh, was your best bet? You know what my best? Up here. Yeah. Well, the... I've been finding stuff like dolphin fishing. I haven't caught a dolphin over 150 feet out of Fort Pierce uh -uh. in a year and a half. Yeah. Every you time haven't... I went out deeper, yeah. I was wasting fuel. But I'm going to tell you my trick. It's when I'm going out, I'm watching all the time. And if I start seeing flying fish, I'm going to start thinking about fishing, man. I'm flying fish is my key. Okay. But what are the 
average hours. Like I said, if I was going to fish for six sales, mile, eight so, mile, so in between the two, six the mile reef, reef, and eight mile six reef. mile reef, in between the reefs, there's <coughs> between those two reefs is a, you know you get a lot of fish. So you got seventy feet is the starting point for six mile, and then you got the next mm -hmm. the next line of reef, which is what 110, 120 feet. 150. All right, so it's still the same numbers. Yeah, for at least but those sales. reef lines don't really run parallel to the coastline, so they could be a little further out. It could be Back a little closer mm -hmm. to the beach, but you know, typically that's where also you're going to see the structure out there that's man-made yeah. as well. You know, they're sinking a mm -hmm. couple There's more. There's all those wrecks coming down. You know, all, yeah. all of those areas are going to be. You know, a lot of the captains would. You know, when I fished, just as an observer, you know, they they have certain their favorite areas that they go, and these sailfish are swimming around. You know, there's there, these wrecks will have bait on them, and those sailfish will be swimming around. Now, you may not, you know, see them, but all you got to do is just troll. If you're live baiting, you know, you want to drift across them or drift around, you know, around them. If there's people anchored up close to them, you, know, you know, obviously. But everything but, up here is more structure-oriented. Yes. I think so, because... But now, uh, you fish out of Fort Pierce? Yes. What about Akaluka Bank? You, you ever go out there? Uh, how you say it? Akalina. Uh, that's what I said, Akalina. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you can't bottom fish that reef. But you can, you can troll it and, okay. and drill fish it. Yeah. And then there's that other reef that's right in there. From, uh, it's in about 65 feet of water. What's the name of it? The one in, off of Fort Pierce. Fort Pierce, yeah. I don't know the name of it, but... It's closer oh, in. Oh, shoot. But, but, starts with a B, maybe? Oh. I don't know. Yeah, I you know what I'm talking about. But that's a... 65 feet off Fort Pierce, is that what you're saying? Sir? 65 feet off of Fort Pierce? Yeah. Okay. Every man with... Google Maps. He's with very phone. He's very narrow. Yeah. But a lot of guys have. Have you ever kite? Have you ever fished with a kite? Have you ever done kite fishing? <coughs> so a lot of guys tend to, down south. They tend to do more kite fishing. But you know, a friend of mine up here does a lot of kite fishing, and that's one way to locate the fish too. You know, you so got three. Up here, they were so thick you didn't have. To. I'll tell you, you don't have to work there's a lot to be kite said. It's kite fishing. If you if you if you're not familiar with it, it takes work to learn it. Um, but it, it does have payoffs because, you know, the, there's a lot to be said about that bait sitting right on top of the water. Yeah. Um, you know, so a lot of times there's, you know, and, it, and you'll get anything, not just sailfish. You know, and one reason kite fishing is not so popular here because most of our tournaments are dead bait. I mean, live bait. Uh, no, dead bait. Dead bait tournaments. Oh. Where down there, y'all fish goggle eyes and stuff like that. And, you know, you, they... You want them on top, but the, ours is dead bait fishing mostly. Okay. So the dragon, dragon ballyhoo ballyhoo and stuff like that. Mostly they're back, dragon uh, attractors, like big uh, dredges, dredges and, and that kind of stuff, and then feeding the live bait back to them. And another Part question. The north, of the, north of Fort Pierce is the Bethel Bank. Bethel Shoals. Bethel Shoals. Bethel Shoals. There you go. Thank you. Bethel Show. Thank you so much, Lisa. It took a while and then, like, <laughs> a lot of names. I don't fish it much, but there's it's apparently a really good area. That's the best place I've ever fished for mutton and snapper, Bethel Show. Bethel Show, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Why did the dolphin come in closer here than that down by me? You know, the, you, can, you, you know what? I mean, over 150 foot. if I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I when I first I grew up down that, south fishing sure. down south. When I first moved up here, I I went out, took my father-in-law out fishing, and we, you know, and I didn't really do that type of fishing or trolling. And you know, we wanted to go out. And we I had a little 175 aqua sport, you know, and we started trolling not far outside towards. We were heading towards the uh, bull shark, and that was in 45 feet of water, and we got two dolphins. 45 feet so and they were decent size they weren't they were keepers they weren't little you know tiny ones they were well you know 10 pound fish 12 pound fish but who knows i mean they the the, the way the gulf stream runs is it turns 
you know, if you look at the shelf, if you look at a, a continental shelf map, you know, Bathus, Bathus, you know, one of those charts that shows you the depths and the, the shelf turns at Jupiter. And when mm -hmm. that, that Gulf Stream follows that turn, and what happens is it creates eddies, you know, big eddies, you know, like lots of big, and there's where yeah, you go out and you see current rips out there. And you collect. It's, it's soup and it's a mile and a half wide. Right. I, I've almost three, four times had to just yank everything in. And run right, it, it, it balls up. We, it balls, same thing it? happens to the bait. You know, I, think it's it's all, I think it's all about the bait because that bait comes in here and it uh, and like Tony was talking about, it gets trapped in that it, uh, it, on that it's not exactly I wouldn't call it a flat, but it gets caught between the the beach, not the beach so much, but the beach and the tongue of the ocean. And they come in to there to feed on the bait. Because I've never really, outside of flying fish, ever seen much bait deeper than 150 feet. I've never seen that much bait deeper than 150 feet. You see fish out there, but you, normally it's going to be beneath it. Or flying fish or something or, like that. Yeah, exactly. Something on the top. But that's, the that's a good point. The deepest tile fish. Sir, how so deep? That's, bottom, that's a bottom fish, yeah. How deep? 1,200 feet. 70, right out the inlet. But that's 26 miles. Yep. To get to 770. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good run. Yeah. So I troll out. I get about three hours of drift. What troll kind out. of rails you use? I've Electric got rails. a uh, NLP, you know, deep drop. Yeah, deep drop that. rail. Yeah. Electromite. And then trolling, I've got the Talica 25s. What kind of electric reel you got? Electromite? The, uh, LP. No. LP. It was my retirement gift to me from me. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good yeah. gift. So, yeah. <laughs> you got it wheeled to anybody? I mean, <laughs> I don't have one. Well, neither of my girls are going to want it. They can keep me in line. <laughs> Put me in there. <laughs> no, I. I you know, fishing electric rails and, and chicken rigs is a great way to catch fish. But I've just, I've never had a boat that was, I thought was capable of doing that. You know, it, uh, now Di was making some new reels that, you know, you can buy them for 1200 bucks. That, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, with, with braided line, now with all the, fancy braided lines, you can get away with a lot smaller reel, you know. And <clears throat> you're talking about reels and rods, you know, I'm amazed at Crowder. Crowder rods, I, I know a, a, a lot of guys that spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on custom-made rods. And I guess they, they've got it, so they spend it. But... You can't beat Crowder rods for deep drop, for bent butts. Uh, I've got two thirties ordered right now for bent butts, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch some of these Wahoo next year or this year. When are they coming in? Uh, Wahoo will be here in May, June. No, when are the rods coming in? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 well, I'm a little bit privileged, so. I'll be able to get a boat for he, us. he paid a couple extra. <laughs> oh, you wanted to go. Well, you got to find some time. He works so much. I don't know. Crowder also has great customer service and warranty. I broke a rod my fault, took it in, and just asked him questions. And he said, you come back in a week, and he made me a whole new rod. Mine was not repairable. You can't beat Robbie. You yeah, just can't beat him. Good job. Where's Crowder located? Well, they just moved. They used to be over in the industrial park. They just moved here in Port St. Lucie. Okay. Uh, you know where that lumber mark is that sells all the the uh, uh, poles, the uh, dock poles? Yeah. It's uh, just north of there in that sh uh, uh, strip mall there. Okay. Yeah. If you'll look them up on the internet. Stewart? Yeah. Like Key West Diner? Huh? So my Key West Diner in that, in that strip mall? Key West Diner. Well, I don't know. 
Yeah, no. Right US one. We're talking about the, that mailbox place right there by Baker. No, you're no. talking about the place Port that has the uh, dock poles and the wood. Yeah, poles. dock poles. Oh. South, Southern Pine. Or yeah, Southern yeah. Pine. That's yeah, Southern Pine. Savannah Road. That's Ryan. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's yeah, Jensen Beach Ryle. Yeah, that's yeah. seven seven oh seven or whatever. Okay, okay. but so he's right there. Right there. He's got yeah. a brand new shop. I didn't know. That. They really do a good job. It's nice. It's really nice. Oh, the, oh, that you talking about that industrial park that they just they just built all the all the new buildings and stuff in there. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Eden Marines and. Yep. Yep. Uh, um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and wind it up. I have a couple things I want to let everybody know. Um, Sundance is gonna, in addition to what I announced earlier at the beginning about our our, our rendezvous, we're gonna do some local stuff for people that don't want to go to the Bahamas. So we here in this store in Jensen Beach are gonna we you know we want to do some things that are gonna highlight the, the brands that we sell, like the pontoons, for instance. We're going to start doing some, uh, just keep an eye out. You know, we'll announce them on this, you know, on this monthly show as they come up. Check our website, uh, SundanceMarineUSA.com. Um, check our Facebook page. Uh, you can reach out to the store, come by, see me, say hello, you know, call us. Um, but we're going to do some things. We're also talking about, what else were we talking about, Haley? There, we were talking possibly going... You know, local trips. We're going to do sandbar events, stuff like that. We're so do like a demo day event too. Demo day, kind of ride, ride before you buy type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we 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 uh, we have some new people in the store, uh, a couple of new managers. So uh, we're excited. We're gonna we're gonna get some stuff going, and um, so you know we're getting more inventory in now. So things are getting things are getting good. You know, so uh, we're getting back to summer. We're gonna start boating more. The wind's gonna die down, right, Sam? Yeah, wind's gonna so, die down. He's got to um, hold on just a bit. Let me say this and say this to you people out there on the internet: if you want, if you thought about going to the Bahamas, you need to go with a big group like this because they don't. Because you got to check in, you got to run a quarantine flag once you get in Bahamian waters. You got to have a manifest, and you know, and it's, and you got to have. And it's a little bit, they don't take checks over there. You got to have some cash. So if you're going to think about going, go with a big group like this because they know, they know the procedures. And that's what I wanted to say. If you go over there just blind on your own, you're going to, man, you're going to say, I ain't never coming back over here. Okay, we do. All. We, we, it's you know because of COVID the last few years that we've, we've you know we've had to cancel them. We've you know we've been limited. So I think this one coming up this July is going to be two years since we've had mm -hmm. one. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I think I might get to go to this one this time. So and I won't work, I won't have to work. I could go. See, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying. I know you are. So, anyways, yeah, but all that information is available. Like I said, uh, SundanceMarineUSA.com. You know, call us, come by and say hello to us. Um, but we look forward to it, and I appreciate it, Sam. It's always been a pleasure. Well, I wish Even we had more to information today. to give you. you but we're going to start back fishing again. Haley told me today, she said, I'm ready to go fishing, man. We are going to fish. So we're going to be we'll back some, fishing some just as soon as the weather breaks. Before our next, before our next month's show. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night, everybody.